Hello, sixth grade. I hope you're having a good day. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off last time in our story of God and his people as told in First and Second Kings. Um, if you have a Bible with you, go ahead and be turning to First Kings chapter 21. We are going to talk about the idea of injustice today. Um, injustice is when things are not as they should be. Things are just not right. Um, God is a God of justice. He is just. He is good. He is right. Um, we, as his children, as his people, we should be people of justice as well. People who do what is right and what is good in his sight. So when I think of injustice, we have a lot of injustice in our world. I think of children being abused. I think of the elderly being neglected. I think of human trafficking, people being bought and sold as slaves. That sort of thing still goes on um, in our communities to this day. And there's a lot of injustice. And what I want us to see from scripture today is that God is very concerned about his people, that he is a God of justice and he wants us to be people of justice as well, because we have been made in his image to be like him. God does not like seeing us hurt one another. He does not like seeing us take advantage of one another. And so we're gonna jump back in to 1 Kings chapter 21 today. Whoops, sorry, bump the desk. Um, we're gonna jump back into 1 Kings chapter 21 today. Um, King Ahab. Um, he pretty much has it all. He's got wealth. He has land. He's a king. Um, he has power. He has fame. And yet one day as he's looking outside his palace, he sees this beautiful vineyard. And he realizes that that particular plot of land doesn't belong to him. And he wants it. He grows envious. So King Ahab, he goes off to meet the owner of that land, and the vineyard, um, the beautiful piece of property, is owned by a man named Naboth. Now, King Ahab, he offers money to Naboth in order to purchase that beautiful plot of land, that vineyard where grapes are grown and where wine is made. Well, Naboth tells King Ahab, no. He says, this land has been in my family for generations. I am not looking to sell it. I want it to continue to be in my family for generations to come. Well, King Ahab is kind of taken aback. He is not used to being told no. And so he goes back to his palace and like a small child, he sulks, he pouts. He refuses to eat. He lays there on his bed. Oh, woe is me. I have it so bad. And Queen Jezebel, the wicked Queen Jezebel, she comes along and she says to her husband, Ahab, why are you so down? Why are you refusing to eat? Why are you pouting what has happened? And so King Ahab tells her the story about wanting to purchase Naboth's vineyard, Naboth refusing to sell it, wow, wow, wow. So Queen Jezebel says, get up, I'll get you your land. So she sends orders to servants to set up this feast. And of course, Naboth was going to be invited to the feast. And Naboth would be given a seat of prominence at the feast. Well, also at the feast, the plan was for men to rise and to make false accusations, false criminal accusations, to basically lie and accuse Naboth of doing horrible things that he really didn't do. And then they were to take Naboth outside, stone him to death. Okay, that actually happened. That's what happened. Naboth went to the feast. People rose up against him, started lying about things that he hadn't done, and the crowd takes him outside, they stone him to death, he dies. Well, guess who ends up with his beautiful vineyard? That's right, none other than King Ahab. Well, God has a problem with what happened to Naboth because he is a God of justice. And throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament as well, 
we have verses in God's word that tells us that God is a God of justice. Now, I want to share with you a few of these verses. You don't have to flip through in your Bible. You can just listen. Leviticus 19, verse 15. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great. But judge your neighbor fairly. Amos 5, verses 11 through 12. You levy a straw tax on the poor and impose a tax on their grain. Therefore, you have built stone mansions. You will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great are your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Malachi 3 verse 5, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, liars, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. Jeremiah 22 verse 13, Woe to him who builds his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his own people work for nothing, not paying them for their labor. And Proverbs 31, verses 8 through 9, woe to him who builds his palace by unrighteousness. Oh, I copied the wrong verse. Ah, Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. Um, let me find it in my Bible really quick. One moment, please. Man, I had it all on my iPad ready to go. But you know what? These things happen. Let's see. Here we go. Proverbs 31 verses 8 through 9. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Such a beautiful, beautiful verse there. Okay, so clearly God has a lot to say about justice, and he wants us as his people to be people of justice, who act justly. And so God sends Elijah to King Ahab to confront him about his evil deeds towards Naboth. So Ahab, when he sees Elijah, he calls him his enemy. He kind of makes fun of Elijah, but Elijah is there to speak truth, and he does just that. He says, the Lord is not happy with you, Ahab, and your days are coming to an end very, very soon. And he tells Ahab, he prophesies that Ahab would die soon and that dogs would lick up Ahab's blood. And that's actually what happened. Not too long after this, King Ahab, he's in battle. He gets injured between the plates of his armor. He is dragged off to a safe place. He ends up dying from his injuries and dogs are there to lick up his blood. So he has a violent end. Now, Queen Jezebel, it's several chapters later, actually in 2 Kings, where her death is described, but her servants, they rise up against her. They can't take it anymore. And she's in um, a room on an upper floor of the palace, and they shove her out through an open window, and she falls down, plunk, hits the ground, dies instantly, and dogs eat her flesh. So she comes to a very grisly end as well. And that was deserved because she was a wicked person, just as Ahab was. So shortly after this, it's actually time for Elijah to leave this earth and to go be with the Lord. Elijah has been a wonderful prophet for God. He has spoken truth. He has performed these amazing miracles. Think back to Mount Carmel, where God answered his prayer and sent the blazing fire there to consume what was on the altar. And remember that God had given Elijah a helper named Elisha um, to be there with him. 
um, they become really close friends. And Elisha definitely views Elijah as a mentor. Well, they come to know that it's about time for Elijah to go to heaven to be with God. I don't know exactly how they knew it, but they did. Um, God gave them that information. And so Elisha, he will not leave Elijah's side. He's sticking so close to him. Well, they're outside and eventually this chariot of fire. Okay, how cool is that? image a chariot of fire and horses of fire they swoop down from heaven they separate elisha from elijah and then a whirlwind takes elijah up into heaven elisha he picks up his cloak picks up elijah's cloak that had been dropped to the ground he takes that as his own he continues in his ministry, continues the mission of being a prophet for God and speaking truth. And he asks God if he could have a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And what's really cool is that God answers that prayer. If you look through the miracles of Elisha in 2 Kings, he did exactly twice the number of miracles that Elijah had done. Um, some of Elisha's miracles include healing a man of leprosy, raising a son back to life, um, helping a widow and her family. Um, there are others. Let's see. Oh, cleanses water. Those are just a few of the miracles that God enabled Elisha to do. And so for more details, um, you can look at the first few chapters of 2 Kings. Um, but my favorite story of Elisha, it's found in 2 Kings chapter 2, and it's just a couple of short verses. It starts in uh, verse 23. Okay, you already know that I have a weird sense of humor, and I think often that um, Bible stories, they have some comedic relief in them. They're funny, and God is the creator of humor, and so God has to have the best sense of humor ever. So 2 Kings chapter 2, starting in verse 23. From there, Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and they jeered at him. Okay, that means they started making fun of him. They yelled at Elisha, get out of here, baldy. Get out of here, baldy. Okay, apparently Elisha was bald have no hair on his head. And these boys are making fun of him for it. And so verse 24 tells us that Elisha turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. And he went on to Mount Carmel and from there returned to Samaria. So it's just this little bitty story um, some young men were making fun of Elisha for being bald. He calls out a curse on them. Bears come out from nowhere and they take care of the boys. So lesson, don't make fun of people for being bald. Bad things could happen. But the important thing, really, the important thing that I want you to remember is that Elisha, he continued to speak truth. He continued to serve the Lord um, for the rest of his life. So that's where we're going to pause in our lesson today. And then in our next lesson, we'll look at some of the other kings of Israel and Judah. Okay, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, most of them are horrible. There are just a few that are really good. We're going to focus on Hezekiah and Josiah in our next lesson and learn some of the qualities and characteristics that they had um, as great leaders and as people who sought after truth and loved the Lord. So um, we are actually not going to have a Bible lesson on Friday. You're not going to have any Q&A sessions on Friday because Friday is Good Friday, the start of Easter weekend. And I want you in our school, we want you to be able to spend time with family that day, spend time in God's word that day. We're pausing from school on Friday, April 10th, to remember the amazing sacrifice of Jesus. Um, I'm so thankful for him. 
and the work that he did on the cross on our behalf. Um, I hope that you and your family will spend time this coming weekend remembering and celebrating Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Easter will be different this year. Um, we won't be heading to church buildings on Sunday morning, and yet God will still be praised, and Jesus will still be honored. Um, he still is Lord, and he still is our Savior. So I hope that you take away a few things from today's lesson. Number one, I want you to remember that God is a God of justice, that he cares how we treat one another, that he wants us to treat one another fairly and with respect and really with love because that's who he created us to be. Um, number two, I want you to take away the amazing examples of Elijah and Elisha. They loved the Lord with all their hearts and they dedicated their lives to him. It wasn't fun. They were mocked. They were made fun of. They were discounted. They were jeered. They were not listened to. And yet they kept going because they knew it was the right thing and they knew it was worth it. It's always worth it to honor God with our lives. And then third takeaway, Easter is coming up and I want you to spend time in reflection and prayer and reading God's word about Jesus. You can refer to any of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John in the New Testament and read through the story of what Jesus did for us, what Jesus did for you. Praise Jesus. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.